Hello ladies and gentlemen, this is Destiny from Desfix and welcome back to another video in the hotel management series using Django. In this one, we're going to go ahead and start working with creating the room type detail. That is what we'll be doing. Hopefully you will enjoy the video and learn something new. Do make sure to drop a like if you do. Consider subscribing as it will really mean the world to me. So let's go ahead and get started. Firstly, I will open up my code editor. And as you already know, we have started working on this. And we've worked on the hotel list page and hotel detail page now what i want to do is go ahead and open up the hotel folder and open up views py and just down here i want to create a new view and i'll call this one room underscore type underscore detail and in here it will take in a couple of parameters firstly i will pass in requests i will pass in slug and i want to pass in the room type slug so I will say RT slug. Now what this will do is this. To access this view that is going to show the room type detail, we have to pass in a couple of things in the URL. So this view over here will pretty much be the view that will allow us check or see the details of a particular type of room. So for example, let's say that in a, in a hotel, we've got the king room, we've got the king, we've got luxury, right and let's say we've got economy and also let's say we've got basic or standard now when we enter the slug of the hotel here and enter the room type hotel which might be king luxury echo or basic here then it will go ahead and fetch this particular room with all its details now you might be like okay what will be the details of the room now a room will have details like it's it's available rooms that are in there and things like rooms that have been checked out already or that have been checked in and you know things like that don't worry when we keep going you better understand what i mean by all this so in here the very first thing that we want to get will be the hotel so the hotel will be hotel.objects.get and i want to firstly get the hotel that the status is live to confirm this, let's check hotel and this is our status over here, field. And as you can see, we have life. So we want to make sure to pass in life over here. And after that, we also want to get a hotel by the slug that was passed in the URL. And after you've done this, we now need to get the room type. So this one is going to be room type dot objects dot get. And remember that a room type has a hotel field in there so we want to firstly get whatever room that we are firstly getting its hotel over here so we'll say hotel should be what hotel which is this one that we got over here so this pretty much means that you should go into the database and get all the room types where the hotel that is attached to the room type is equal to this hotel that we just got over here at the top and apart from getting only the hotel, we also want to get that particular room type. So we we'll say slug should be equal to RT slug. Now you might be like, why did I call this RT slug? Where, did, where is the keyword coming from? Why did I also call this slug? Where is the keyword coming from? Take notes. You can call this banana. Okay. And you can also call this apple. Okay. Now, what you can just do is take banana and make sure you put it in here and also apple in here. And now when you are creating the URL for this, just like we have slug over here, what you will then do is pass in apple and banana. This is just to show you that there is no defined name that I'm putting that I'm putting it in here. I'm just coming up with the names. OK, so to stick to naming convention, instead of using banana and apple, I will stick to slug and RT slug, which pretty much means room type slug. And after we've got to these two things, now let's go ahead and get all the rooms that are associated to the room type. Hopefully you already know that we have a, a model called room, which pretty much has a foreign key to room type. So that means if we have a room type that is called king, then we might have like 16 rooms that are king, that are king rooms associated to the room types. And since this is the room type detail, we will want to see all the new all, all the rooms that are in the room type. So all we need to do is say rooms should be equal to, then we want to call room.object. This time around, we use filter. 
then one of filter by room underscore type should be equal to the room type that we got at the top. So this room type over here is pretty much this field that we have here. So we are saying, hey, get all the rooms that are in the database where the room type is same as this room that we have at the top here. Now at the top, we say get all the room types where the hotel is same as this hotel that we have at the top here. So you can pretty much see the nested query that we are actually writing over here. And also we want to get only the rooms that are available. So is available, which is this, should be what? True. So only when a room has its availability status as true, that is when we want to return the room. With this, we are pretty much done. Let's just go ahead and create a new context. And we want to pass in all this data that we just got in this context. Now you might be like, okay, what do we use context for? Since we are getting all this data, if you already know how all this works, then you should know that we are now trying to pass this data that we have gotten now, or this query that we have written, we are trying to pass it now to the template so that we can actually show something up on the front end. Now, in order to pass in the hotel, the rooms, the rooms type, and all those information, you pretty much want to pass it in a context dictionary that will be sent alongside the template or alongside the render function to the template. So I will say return render and in here we're passing requests and over here I will pass in the request parameter in here. Then the name of the template, which will be hotel slash. And just like I, I said in the previous video, use the name of your view as the name of the template so that you keep things easy and organized. And finally, let's pass the context alongside the render function to the template, just like this, and we are done. So all we need to do now is go ahead and create the URL in here. So I will create a new part. And for this one, what I pretty much need to do is to use the detail keyword over here. And firstly, we have slug, right? So let me put this side by side so you understand how we actually configure the URL. So over here, the first thing that we have here is slug. So you want to take this and we will say slug should be slug, which means the URL is going to be expanded the slug. And also remember it's a room type. So I'm going to say room dash type, then slash. What is the next thing that we have? RT slug. So we, we say slug and we pass in RT slug and add a slash. As simple as that. Now you can say views dot, then call the name of the view, which is room type detail. And also you will need to pass in a name space over here. And I also recommend that you use the name of your view as the name space. Okay. So after you've done all this, that's pretty much everything that we want to do. Now, what we can now do is try accessing this page by typing in some things into the URL. Because right now we don't have any particular room that we will click on to open these information up. Or you know what we will do to even make things more better and faster. Let's go ahead and open up the hotel detail page. So I'll open up the hotel underscore detail, the HTML. And we actually need to look for a place where we are looping through the hotels. So let me go ahead and open up this and open up one of these hotels. And you can see that, do we have any room for this hotel? Let me check that out in my database. So I will log in with my credentials. Okay, that seems not to be correct. Let me log in with this. Okay, and this is a hotel, right? This one, and um, how about the room type? Okay, we don't have any room type yet. So let's go ahead and create a new room type. Let's say we wanna create for I don't know, let's say the premium hotel and let's say the type of this room is going to be king and the room cost about, let's say 40 of whatever currency you're working on per night. And let's say in this hotel, they've got 15 beds and the room capacity for like how many people that can stay in one room, let's say four people, one room. And for the slug, you could pretty much still add this king over here as the slug. Okay, then let's save this. That is great. Now open up rooms 
and let's add a room. So now hotel, remember we created room type for premium hotel. So back to the rooms, we create a hotel, we attach the hotel, the room type is this, room number one, like that, save and add another. Okay, it says room type has no attribute, room object has no attribute type. Okay, it's, it's actually great that we found this error now, so let's go ahead and fix it. So um, in the room type, I said self.type. Room object has no attributes type. Okay, in this room over here, see, there is no field called type, but I said return self.type, which doesn't make sense. Instead, just return self.roomType.type, okay? So right now, this should now work. Okay, another one, maximum recursion depth exceeded. Let's re-add this room again for the premium, this room number one, save and add. Okay, I'm still getting this. Let me go ahead and remove the, for, for this, let me open it up so you guys can see. This is what's causing the issue. I will get rid of that. And let's try this again now. Let's try again. Now, see that works. So I wanna add another room for King, room number two, save and add another. I wanna add another one, room number three, save and add another. I wanna add another one, room number four, save. So this is a one time thing that you have to do on your admin section. After you've done this, every other thing should happen automatically. So after you've created all the whole rooms and giving them their room numbers, then you don't need to do this, except if for any reason a room is maybe under construction and something like that, then you could delete the room, okay? While it's pending construction and maybe maintenance, okay? So now that we've done all this, that's pretty much everything that we want to do. I will open up the product, the, the hotel detail page again. And um, let me take this to the side. And this is the hotel detail page. So I want to loop through the rooms over here, okay? So in the select pass section, that is what I'm looking for over here. Get rid of all the allies that we have and just stick with only one, okay? Just like this. So after we've done this, what we need to do is go ahead and write one simple code in the, in the hotel detail page to actually get all the rooms. Or even if you don't want to write any you know, specific code in the hotel detail page, you could pretty much loop through the rooms just by actually typing out the code that we have in our model. So let me open up the model again and come over to the hotel model, this one over here. We have this code called hotel gallery thumbnail. Okay, as you can see right now, we don't have, we don't have the code that is gonna help us actually loop through the related hotel room types. So what I wanna do is this. Down here, I will write a new function. I will say define hotel underscore room underscore types, okay? And over here, I will just pass in self, just like that. And let me pass for now and explain something. So this is actually a very, you know, efficient way of creating nested queries in a model. Instead of you to always keep writing your queries in the views over here, you can as well just write it in the model. And whenever you're calling those hotel objects and chain whatever function you called, you could easily get whatever data that you are expecting. Let me do this so you better understand. So I want to loop through the, actually not loop through, I want to filter all the room types that is related to those hotel objects that we are interacting with. So I will say room type, the objects the filter by hotel should be equal to self. And that is because in the room type, you can see that we have a hotel foreign key that goes back to the hotel model. So we said, hey, get all the room types where the hotel that is attached to the room type is equal to this hotel model over here. That is what self pretty much means. Now over here, just pass a return at the back so that it returns whatever data that you get over here, 
back to the front end or to anywhere that you want to use it. Okay, so that's one out of the way. Now we can now make use of this hotel room types in the front end or instead in the hotel detail page. I think that is what you could better understand. So grab the hotel room types and back to the hotel detail page just over here. I'm going to say for for R in then remember that in the in the hotel views so let me open up the views py over here the hotel detail we have this hotel keyword that was passed into the context which was then passed into the template which means we can access this hotel keyword in our hotel detail page which is pretty much what we have been using to do things like hotel.description hotel.name hotel.mobile hotel.email so we can now say hey for R, you can name this banana, okay? You can name it whatever you want, but I just want to say for R in hotel dot, then the room types over here. The room types, and since we are using a filter uh, method or maybe all or whatever you want to use that has to do with getting multiple query, maybe in a query set, you want to say dot all, okay? Even if you don't pass in the dots all, it's still going to work perfectly well. Then over here, let's go ahead and end for. So in Django, whenever you're running a for loop in the template, make sure that you end the for so it knows where to start and where to stop. Now, if I reload this page, okay, this isn't showing anything here because we are in the Pecolin Hotel, but let me get back to the Premium Hotel and you can now see that we have one data showing up here. So let's go ahead and change up a couple of things. For this one, I will firstly say r.type. That is because if you look at the room type, you see the type over here is pretty much what shows if the room is a king room or if it's an economy and you know, things like that. So when we reload now, see king. Now I'm gonna get rid of the 20% off for now. When we need that later, we'll get it back. It says one person max let's just change this max to room capacity room capacity and i will say r dot room capacity and now when we reload see room capacity four persons which is pretty much what we added when we were creating the room type over here you see four persons so after we've done that we can still add in a couple of things now that one is up to you if you want to add all that but i think it makes sense to add for example the number of beds so we can also say number of beds should be r dot number of beds and we over here i'll just say beds and now let's reload this see number of beds in this room is 15. that is quite unrealistic let me just change this to two so in the king room it can actually contain four people and it has only two beds and it costs 40 dollars per night I think that makes more sense, right? Yep. And um, for now, I think that's pretty much it. Let's also put a price. So I will say price per night. Okay. And here I will say dot price and just pass in the dollar sign here. Okay. There you go. Remove this. Take the per night. And put it over here okay $40 per night now that's pretty much it I actually just saw a place now that we can uh, that we could also add the price in I think it's one hot if you still add a price over there all right now see 40 bucks okay and after all this over here I will just put in a let me put in a P tag and an A tag and I will say view more let's see there you go that is what i want and let me just give this a quick styling here i will give it a quick style i will say border bottom 1px gray um dashed okay let's see right there is what i want and also i'm gonna give it a margin top let's just say 10px so this is inline styling I actually don't recommend you do this or you might actually make your code 
gets really messy. You can you can just put this in your style CSS, okay? But just to quickly get things up and running, that is why I'm doing this. So now let's take this URL that we have over here. Remember this URL that we wrote? Let's grab it and put it in here. So that when we click on this, we will now open up a new page where we will view all the available rooms in this room type. To do that, I will firstly create a new URL tag and um, the name of the app is hotel. Firstly, the name of the URL is room type detail and the parameters that it needs are, firstly, it needs slug, which is the hotel slug over here. So we need to say hotel dot slug. That is one. And also it needs the room type slug. So the room type slug is going to be R dot. Remember that in the room type model, there is a slug field. So that one's going to be R dot slug. Okay. Now you could also say R dot hotel, hotel dot slug, because in the room type that we've got hotel model, which still links back to the hotel over here that has a slug field. Either way, it's gonna still work. See, no error, it's still working well. Now, when I click on this, it says templates not found. That is cool. So we just need to create the room type detail HTML template. I'm gonna grab that. And um, down here in the template hotel, I will now create room type detail HTML. And now we successfully have this done and dusted. So after we've done all this, I will close up all the pages that we have over here. And now let's work with the room type detail. I want you to open up the front end template, open up the main template and open up the room type detail over here. Copy all the code that's in here and paste it in the room type detail for template hotel app. Okay. And after you've done this, let's reload this page. See what we have looking pretty ugly. Let's change this up a little bit. Firstly, in the hotel detail, you could bring in this information over here and put it at the top. Okay. And you also want to make sure that you end block content, just like it was ended in the hotel detail. So you want to end it here too. And after you've done that, let's see. Now, there you go. This is more like what I wanted. So after we've done this, now let's start changing up a couple of things. Firstly, let me open up the view, which is the hotel room type detail view. And firstly, I want to show the type of the room over here that it says King Room. Instead of passing in the dummy King Room text, I will say room type dot type. And now when we reload, see, it shows King Room. That is because it's King Room, okay? See now, the King Room isn't passed here any longer, but it shows up here. If you get rid of this now, you will see only room. See, only room. But passing room type or type, then you see the name of the room. It will get it dynamically based on whatever that we have over here, okay? Don't change this up. It will throw a bug. This is automatically passed in based on the data that's in the database. For the number of available rooms i think i think the best thing to do over there is just count how many rooms that we've got right so i could just say because in the views py we've got rooms which is passed to the template i could just say rooms dot count so it will count all the available rooms see four available rooms that is pretty cool over here let's say i want to make one of this room to not be available and we reload this, see, three available rooms. So this is all available rooms. The king room has one available rooms. So let's change up all this again. Instead of using the dummy text king room, I will say room underscore type dot type. And instead of saying has one, I will say rooms dot count. Rooms dot count. Okay, now let's reload this, see. That's working well. Now let's look through all the rooms over here and display its information just down here. That will be over here, I believe. And um, 
just give me a sec. Let me take a close look at this. This is what we've got, right? Let me copy this, put it down here and see how it looks. All right, I don't, I don't think I've got the result that I'm looking for. What I actually need is, I believe should be this, right? Let me put this in multiple places and see how it looks before I start writing the loop. All right, that is what I'm looking for. So guys, just above this code that says plan featured code MD class, you want to write a new for loop. And this one is going to be for R in rooms. Okay. And for R in rooms, what do you want to do? Firstly, don't forget to end off the for loop and fix the indentation so your code looks organized just like this. And now when you reload, you should now see still three over here. How about I want to get back the room that was made unavailable. See, we now have four. Pretty cool, right? Let's start off by changing the number of the rooms. See over here, it says um, room number. Okay, R dot room number. That's one, two, three, four. Okay, when you get rid of this and just say maybe room number, blah, blah, blah. Then you can see that we have this weird looking long text over here. But when you use R dot room number, which pretty much means that we call the object of the room over here. And remember in the model for the room, we have this field called room number, which was what we assigned when we were creating the rooms over here. Remember that, right? So now when a room becomes unavailable, let's say I want to make room number three to be unavailable. Then now you will see that room one, two, and four is only available. Room three isn't here. That is because someone has actually checked in. I hope that makes sense. Now let's also put in the prizes. Now, see over here, I've got R dot room type price and also the bed and capacity. Now you might be like, okay, why is all this actually pre-filled in? That is pretty much because in the templates that I just got, this we are already added in. I didn't actually remove them, okay? I'll make sure to get or purge all the templates from all Django keywords so that you have to actually type this in yourself, all right? But don't worry, don't stress much about this. When time gets to use this, I will actually show you guys how it all works. For now, I'm gonna get rid of all this so that we start from scratch when we wanna start working with, you know, adding the room to selection by clicking on this button, and, you know, performing all those cool operations, okay? So um, get rid of this, um, get rid of this. We can leave the hidden inputs, okay? and um, fix indentation so our code looks nice now you can see bed two room capacity for bed two capacity for so guys i believe that's pretty much it for the tutorial in the next one we're gonna go ahead and start working with something new and hopefully you will learn something else i hope you enjoyed the video and learned something new do make sure to drop a like consider subscribing as it really mean the world to me also, check out the link in the description below. I've got a couple of courses that will help you become even a better Django developer. Do make sure to check them out. Consider enrolling as it really means the world to me. I hope to see you in the next video. And until then, my love, peace out.